I think we're recording. How the battery is, I don't know. We'll find out. I might just do a bit of a, uh, a walkthrough here of the uh, of the hotel, Parkview Hotel that we're staying at. Now I've just run across uh, Mark, who uh, is not normally called Mark. You normally call him Isaacs. He's the manager of the Attacky Team Gusto team, Mark. Neil. How's it going? Good. How are you? Very good. Now tell us a bit about these bikes that you've got here. Yeah, they're um, unique to Australia. They haven't been uh, introduced to Australia yet. So oh, oh, well please, can you introduce us? I'd like to introduce you Gusto. Uh, a nice team edition bike, um, designed uh, by two Dutch engineers and uh, manufactured in-house at uh, the Gusto in how, how do you mean in-house? Which house are we talking? Well, not yours. Yes. It's not big enough. No, I haven't seen you around. No, no. It's, uh, no engineers? Well, there's Tim. Well, he's not an engineer. He's very qualified, but he's no engineer. He'll tell you he's an engineer. Yeah, whether you believe it or not. No, it's uh, in, in, in the Taiwan house, uh, in the Gusto house. So, um, yeah, no, they're, they're actually quite a good bike. The boys, uh, I've had some really good feedback from the boys. Oh, uh, we're getting almost a bit too into the plug bit, end of the, end of the spectrum. Level, yeah, so, no, there's too much plug in. No, Thanks, that, Mark. We're going to move on. <laughs> Geometry is very similar to the William Bosch. No, nah, that's it. We'll, we'll leave it at that. Thanks, Mark. Go and have a test ride, Neil. Don't leave me. We'll, Don't see, leave you, me. we'll see you at the course. <laughs> and Mark Arsa actually sort of ran with that opportunity there, didn't he? Look, they're clearly not as good as the Avantis, that's, uh, that's all I'll say, without getting in a bit of a plug battle. So just heading down to the lobby in a tick. Um, just a standard elevator. We've got the elevator to ourselves here, that's probably just as well. We, uh, just some last minute heckling there from Isaacs. So we're just gonna head down to the lobby and uh, meet up with, uh, with Tim Guy, the other part of what's on in the Peloton. Uh, he's got the microphone there, so we might do a bit of a pre-prologue podcast. That one's a bit of a tongue twister, the old triple P. So here he is. Waiting in the lobby, as promised, Tim. How you doing? Yeah, pretty good. I've been waiting, uh, waiting a little while here just to to wait for Neil to come down, and it's a good spot to be. You can see a lot of different riders just floating past. A few bikes already set up over here in the distance, and it's a nice spot. Colnago, vantage yes. point. Yep. We just talked to Mark Isaacs, your team, your team manager. He just gave us. You know, look, I tell you what, give a man an inch, he takes a mile. I just asked him about the gustos, and bam. He's trying, to sell, he's trying to sell Gustos yeah, to he's everyone. A, he's a big fan of the Gustos. He, uh, he definitely is ready to sell them to anyone that will uh, take an interest. That's a very close up. Like, I think that's probably got a, a nice view of the insides of my mouth. Well, look, because of the fish eye, Tim, I found you need to really get it close because if you don't, you sort of, you know, you zoom right out. All right. So, see what I was talking about with just a, a bit of a view. If you swing around, you can see a sky rider waiting for the lift. Yep. But that's uh, but that's that's pretty much it. We uh, at the moment, but things are always changing. One pro cyclist coming past now. That's uh, Reinhard Bonke. Look, when Tim says one pro, he doesn't actually mean there is a single pro rider. There's actually a team called One Pro Cycling well, here. Two one pros in the lobby at the moment. Two of them. Two ones. So he's not again. He's not saying there's two pros. He's saying two riders from the One Pro team. Is that right, Tim? Yeah, there's two one pros. Two one pros. Two, two one pros. Alright. And that's not a countdown, that's No, that's just two one pros. Two one pros, okay. Yeah. Okay, well let's move on to the uh, the deeper into the lobby where we might set up a bit of a podcast. We're gonna give you a bit of a bit of a background into uh, you know a bit of a backstage pass behind the scenes of the uh, the podcast. Yeah, that sounds really good. I wasn't aware that we were doing that, but that seems like a, a wonderful look, idea. Look, in the future, it'd be good to be included in decisions like that. But well, look, this decision was made on the fly. I uh, very spontaneous. So, look, we're going to go deeper into the lobby and uh, right, let's, um, we're going to start this podcast and show you, you know, show you the behind the scenes, the exciting stuff that well, you, you, well, you never get to see anything in a podcast, but we'll we'll show you things. No, that, we'll show you. We'll come that on. You can't come, see. come over this way. And get done away. Yeah. Sort of a common meeting ground for riders from all teams. Often you might come down to play some backgammon or, or a game of bang, or you might just come down here to chill if you've got a bit of time uh, in between any commitments that you may have. So it's been good over the last couple of days just to come down here and relax for a little bit, forget about the riding maybe just for a second, and 
um, eat a muffin or something like that. So we just pull that out and you can see this looks a bit like an alien there, but uh, it's actually a, a very classy digital microphone. Ta-da! Oh, it's all quite technical, look at this. Yeah, this, this here is actually um, Give a, a simple up USB. Simple USB, but what you will notice with this USB is that it's, um, it's exceptionally long. It's very long. Well, that's going to come in handy. Very handy. You can move the microphone around a bit. Otherwise, you get a bit stuck. Like, obviously, a wireless would be good, but... Um, and look, we, we do have another small microphone, a little dictaphone that we uh, carry around to these events to, to get small interviews, like, on the fly. Like, you see Chris for a minute at the elevator. You quickly whip it out. Oh, Chris, how you doing? That sort of thing, but... Uh, I forgot it. Yeah, Tim forgot That's, it. Yes, definitely So, look, bad. it's good that we've got that extra cord there because that will mean that I'll be able to carry, carry the laptop sort of semi-discreetly while Tim can just kind of walk forward with the mic and it'll look like a semi-professional setup, we hope. So we're just waiting for the uh, laptop to fire up and just while we do, I thought we'd just do a bit of a, uh, just a behind the scenes of uh, nutrition of a cyclist. So, Tim, it's commonly sort of, um, commonly sort of held belief that as a cyclist you need, well everyone knows, you need to be light, you need to be able to just climb climb like the wind up the climbs. You need to be lightweight to do that. If you're real heavy, like you know, when you've got a big, big school backpack on and you're trying to walk or ride up a hill, it's hard. So you've got to be light. Now Tim, can you have muffins? Well, you would, you would generally think muffins are a no-go. You think muffins, quite a lot of energy, fairly dense, climbing to her. No You'd be muffins. too fat. No muffins. But, um, which I thought was definitely, the, I was counting muffins out, but Neil's just brought to me a little, a little bag. Um, which contains some food, and I had a look inside, and, and apparently, at a climbing tour, you, you, you can have muffins. Uh, a, a cyclist muffin, you might call this. It's a very small, it, it's a very small muffin. Yep, but it, um, it'll keep you lean, it'll keep you light, so, but you can still have a muffin, because, you know, you don't want to be sort of looking across the room and thinking, oh, look at them all eating muffins, and the managers are eating muffins, and you just, you end up, you can feel like crap, because, you know, no one wants to be left out. So this is Parkview Hotel have, have made these little muffins for the cyclists. It's very nice of them, but you do sort of look at it and still feel a bit like, oh, that's it. It's full. <laughs> but look, that, sure it's that is much better, much better than not having any muffin at all. So look, it's all about sort of, you know, mm. good. I was having a good muffin. Yeah, but look, you, you don't need to just not have any muffins. You just choose the cyclist muffin. So mm. you can stay light, climb like the wind. Verdict? Good cyclist muffin, but stay away from the buffet. Buffets. Okay, there you go. Okay, so we're just about to start recording the podcast, so we'll, we'll show you uh, how it all begins. On the air in no, three. not. Oh, yeah, Tim. <laughs> Alright, so here we go. I'll click it, and Tim can sort of get us rolling. Here we go. Welcome to What's oh. in the. Welcome to What's On in the Peloton, the Jayco Herald Sun Tour edition. Here we are in the Park View lobby recording uh, the first of what hopefully will be a series of podcasts on the podcast on the Sun Tour. Now, there's a bit of noise in the background there that you can hear. That's someone cleaning out a coffee machine. We've decided to go for the authentic feel here in the lobby. Amongst the action, we can see riders leaving the hotel. We can see guys coming back in. So this is a nice place to be to pick up the vibe. You can hear some footsteps to get you immersed in the whole, uh, the whole sort of... The Sun Tour. The Sun Tour, yeah, to get Be you part. part of it. Now, don't forget that this uh, podcast is brought to you by Arctic Fit, women's specific compression wear. Now, uh, today, I've actually finally managed to get myself into a pair, and I'm quite liking the feel. Uh, so sometimes we get going. So sometimes we, uh, you know, we tell little lies, I suppose. Like we, we haven't actually got any yet, but... Uh... So we would have done this the other day. It's actually few days uh, since we did that first lot of filming you can probably tell I've had a shave um, but look we ran out of battery on the uh, on the Shimano camera here so we couldn't finish it up but look hope you've enjoyed the behind the scenes of the what's on in the peloton podcast if you want to see that full podcast or no I shouldn't say see you want to hear it you can't see it at all but if you want to hear it uh, go on to podbean.com or check out our Facebook what's on in the peloton and uh, it should be up there and, uh, yeah, there'll be plenty more to come. Hopefully we'll do um, 
a few more throughout the Sun Tour and see if we can get some interviews with some of the uh, international cyclists and maybe even the voice of cycling, Phil Liggett himself. Until then, goodbye.